On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at desperately want to know God. Someone will will somehow learn about God and they'll desperately want to know God. And they'll see their friends who are in love with God and praising Him and having experiences and they say, I want that. And they start seeking God and it's like nothing. And they're thirsty and they seek more and more. And what they don't realize is God, He's playing hard to get with you. The, the mystery of the Trinity, it's a beautiful mystery. And it's something that for me as a child, I remember learning, you know, I went to a Catholic school, I remember just as a young child, the teachers in very simple terms just explaining this mystery, you know, saying that there's one God, there's only one God, He's perfectly one, and God is, is a union of persons, three persons, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're not three different gods, they're one God, but they're perfect, the, the, these persons are perfectly one, making them one God. And, and as mysterious as, as this is, even for me as a child, it's like a, a seed was planted. I've always had some kind of, I guess you could say, understanding of this mystery of the Trinity. And what I want to do this morning is that this, this teaching, this homily this morning, it's going to be somewhat catechetical. Um, because again, our, our faith is something that we do need to engage our, our intellect, we do need to teach, and so that's what I'm going to do a bit of that here this morning. So what I want to do is I want to read a bit from the Catechism, um, what the Catechism says about the Most Holy Trinity. <coughs> First of all, the Catechism says, the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity is the central mystery of the Christian faith and of Christian life. So it's kind of important to understand and to know the Trinity. It goes on to say, God alone can make it known to us by revealing Himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's an important point, and I want to emphasize this point. The fact that to understand or to know the Trinity uh, is a gift. It says uh, in paragraph 237, the Trinity is a mystery of faith in the strict sense one of the mysteries that are hidden in God, which can never be known unless they are revealed by God. So again, the mystery of the Trinity, uh, it, it's a gift to understand this mystery. And that's why even this morning, as I'm preaching and as I'm teaching, let's just, let's just open our hearts and minds in prayer. Let's say, Lord, help me to understand, help me to know the mystery of the Trinity. Because again, it's a gift. It's a gift God de desperately wants us to receive, but it is a gift. It, and it goes on to describe the Trinity, it, it's, it's an ineffable mystery. I like that word, ineffable. Ineffable means beyond our understanding, transcendent. Infinitely beyond all that we can humanly understand, the mystery of the Trinity. And St. Augustine, he, go, he says, if you understood him, it would not be God. In other words, nobody, no human being, not even the angels, not even the Blessed Mother, can fully comprehend the mystery of the Trinity. For all of eternity, we will be penetrating more deeply and more deeply into this awesome and wonderful mystery. Too, too great to, 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 to fully comprehend. But, but the Lord, of course, wants us to, to enter into this, this mystery and this gift. Now, uh, the Catechism goes on to say, To be sure, God has left traces of His Trinitarian being in His work of creation and in His revelation through the Old Testament. So there are traces in creation that point to the mystery of the Trinity. You know, one of them, for example, that we, we use to, to, to describe the Trinity is the sun. We all experience the sun. Well, the sun is a great big ball of fire of some sort, nuclear reaction of some sort. And they say like that, that, that ball of fire, that's like God the Father. And the rays of light that emanate from that ball of fire is like Jesus which is the same as the, 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 the is, is one with the ball of fire, and then the heat 
we experience, the, the sensation we experience, that's like the Holy Spirit. But it's all, it's all one sun. It's the, everything is the sun, and yet there's you know, different ways we, we experience that. Another image that is very uh, common uh, when we describe the Trinity is the image of a husband and wife. We know, of course, we're made in the image of God, image and likeness of God. And the image of a husband and wife in marital love, this one flesh union, this, this exchange of love, this giving and this receiving of love, this ecstasy of love, where they are so one, it's like they're outside of themselves in this ecstasy of love, and this exchange of love is so real that in nine months you give it a name. So again, you got the, the, the image of the union of the Father and the Son, and this union, this exchange of love is actually a person, the Holy Spirit. So these are just some of the images. No image is perfect. Uh, there's no perfect image of the Trinity, but these are just images that help us to understand the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity. <clears throat> now, what I want to do, I'm, I'm going to get technical on you this morning. I apologize in advance. I'm going to read to you from the Catechism, kind of the, the, the articulation that the Catechism gives us for the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Because again, I, I at least just want to plant these seeds in your minds, in your hearts, in your intellects, so that you, you can have this distinction. And again, even a child can have this seed planted. So again, this is very technical, but, but uh, listen up. I hope, hope, did everyone have their coffee this morning? If you didn't have your coffee, this is going to be rough. Okay, ready? Here it is. This is the Catechism's articulation. The Trinity is one. We do not confess three gods, but one God in three persons. The consubstantial Trinity. And there's a whole section on language. I won't get into that. The divine persons do not share the one divinity among themselves, but each of them is God whole and entire. The Father is that which the Son is. The Son, that which the Father is. The Father and the Son, that which the Holy Spirit is. It goes on to say, the divine persons are really distinct from one another. God is one, but not solitary. Father, Son, Holy Spirit are not simply names designating modalities of the divine being, for they are really distinct from one another. So in other words, the, 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 the catechism is, is, is highlighting, it's not like it's just different modes of God. It's like you have father mark, you have surfer mark, and skateboarder mark. Same guy, different modes. They're saying, no, 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 no. There's actually, there, there are actually distinct persons, not just God in different modes. He is not the father who is the son, nor is the son who is the father, nor is the Holy Spirit who is the father or the son. They are distinct from one another in their relations of origin. It is the Father who generates the Son, who is begotten, and the Holy Spirit who proceeds. And so there's this whole mystery of, you know, we know that God is, is, is again, a, a communion, relationship, and there's this flow. Uh, again, and this is mysterious, but again, um, the Father who generates, the Son who is begotten, and the Holy Spirit who proceeds eternally. And so I plant that seed in your mind, in your heart, in your intellects, so that you can understand, so that as, as a means of helping you to enter into the mystery of the Trinity, which God desperately wants to reveal to us. Now, again, just highlighting how God wants to reveal us to us. The Catechism goes on to say, God freely wills to communicate the glory of His blessed life. Again, the mystery of the Trinity is something that God desperately wants to, to share with us, to reveal to us. By the grace of baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
we are called to share in the life of the Blessed Trinity here on earth in the obscurity of faith and after death in eternal light. So they say in the next life we'll have a whole new and deeper and clearer understanding of the mystery of the Trinity. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. I want to highlight again how desperately God wants us to know who He is. In Isaiah chapter 65, the Lord says to the prophet Isaiah, I was ready to respond to those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am to a nation that did not invoke my name. So again, our God is one who's saying, who, who desperately wants to be found. Even by people who aren't seeking God, God is knocking at the door of their heart saying, hey, let me in. Let me reveal myself to you, my love to you. Also in <clears throat> Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah tells us, or the Lord says to the prophet Jeremiah, when you look for me, you will find me. Yes, when you seek me with all your heart. And as one of the basic principles of the spiritual life, God is love. You don't find God using your brain alone. The intellect has a part to play in it, but if we're, if we're wanting to encounter and to know love, we must do that out of love. We must seek God lovingly. And when we do, we find Him. So again, it's a basic principle. If you seek God with all your heart, you will find Him. Guaranteed. That's a biblical promise. But the opposite is also true. If you do not seek God with your heart, with all your heart, you won't find Him. Because again, God is love. And the only way we can encounter God is in this, this, this loving relationship with our hearts. Again, the intellect does play a role in this uh, adventure, but it ultimately is meant to be an experience of the heart. Now, what does this mean for us? Brothers and sisters, each one of us needs to develop a relationship with the Most Holy Trinity. As a matter of fact, the Holy Trinity, the Catechism says, wants to dwell within us. Have you ever heard the expression, the indwelling Trinity? Did you know that the, the Most Holy Trinity wants to dwell in you? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Some people say, oh, I know Jesus is in my heart, but uh, is, is the Father in my heart? Yes. The, the, I know the Spirit is in me, but is Jesus in me? Yes. The, the indwelling Trinity. And the Lord Jesus himself, he speaks about this. He says, whoever loves me will keep my word. This is in John 14, chapter, uh, verse 23. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Other translations say we will make our home in him. So the Trinity wants to dwell in us. And we, we, we see a manifestation of this in Galatians chapter 4 verse 6, as proof that you are children, God sent the Spirit of His Son in our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. There it is, in our hearts, the Spirit of Jesus in our hearts, crying to the Father. So again, this mystery of the indwelling Trinity, the, lo the love of our God living and dwelling in us, is meant to be something we grow in. So what does that mean? That means each one of us, we need to develop a, a relationship with the Trinity, and we need to come to know each of the persons personally. We need to develop a personal relationship with God the Father. We can't treat God the Father just like God, you know, far away. You know, there's Jesus, there's the Holy Spirit, and then there's God. No, 
God your Father. You have to have a relationship with your Father God, with your Abba. Don't just treat Him like distant God. He is, he is God, but he's, he's Abba, He's Father. We need to have a relationship, obviously, with the Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen, who is alive, who is Savior. And we need to have a relationship with God the Holy Spirit, and especially to know the power of the Holy Spirit. The Catechism says that um, one God and Father from whom all things are, and only one Lord Jesus Christ through whom all things are, uh, one Holy Spirit in whom all things are, what is proper to divine persons in their own divine nature, what is proper to the Holy Spirit in a particular way is this, this power, this experience of His power. In my own life, the first person of, this, of the Trinity I came into a personal relationship was the Lord Jesus. I came across the charismatic renewal and they kept telling me, you need to know Jesus. And it became obvious to me that Jesus was alive. I invited him to, into my heart and came to a relationship with him. And along with that, almost at the same time, was the Holy Spirit. It's like when I gave my life to Jesus, they told me, now you're going to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. So those two relationships began, but I had trouble with the, with the, with the love of God the Father. For some reason, I, I, I don't know what, I just felt that, you know, I, I couldn't receive the love of the Father. And it wasn't until I joined the seminary when people kept insisting to me, you need to know the love of your Father. You can't just treat the Father like distant God. He is your Abba. He is your Father. He loves you unconditionally. He wants to know you intimately. He's on your side. And again, it's like seeds that have planted and that were meant to nurture and grow. My, my love, my intimacy, my knowledge of the Father has grown. It continues to grow. My, my love of Jesus has grown. It continues to grow. My love of the, Sp the Holy Spirit has grown. It continues to grow. And, and, and the Trinity, you know, we st I still pray the Trinity. One of the things I like to do, I think I was taught this in the seminary, when I'm waiting on God's Word, is I like to praise the Trinity. I like to praise, you know, you know, glory to you, Holy Trinity, you are awesome. And I always like to highlight that they made me. Holy Trinity, you made me. Then I start with the Father, Abba, Father, you, uh, you are the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. You made me. I praise you, and I praise the Father for a bit. Then I thank you for sending your Son, Jesus. Jesus is the Word who was in the beginning with God, through whom all things were made. So Jesus, you made me. I praise you, and I, you know, and I, I highlight you know, who Jesus is. You are the light that shines in the darkness. You are the good shepherd. You are the Alpha Omega. You are the bread of life. And thank you for sending the Spirit. And in Spirit, you are creator Spirit, so you made me too. All of, you know, one God made me. I praise you, Spirit. You are, you are my, you, the power. You are the, you know, the, the, uh, my, my, my guide, the paraclete, the counselor, and all that. And then I just kind of pray in the Spirit in general, and then I wait on God's Word. That's what we we're taught. The best way to catch God's Word is to, to just pray in the Spirit to the Holy Trinity, and then wait on the Word. So that's just one example of, of, of this Trinitarian faith, knowing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to close with one scripture. God wants us to have a relationship with Him, but God sometimes plays hard to get. Did you know that? Sometimes God plays hard to get, and sometimes you see that someone will, will somehow learn about God, and they'll desperately want to know God, and they'll see their friends who are in love with God and praising Him and having experiences, and they say, I want that, and they start seeking God, and it's like nothing, and they're thirsty, and they seek more and more, and what they don't realize is God, He's playing hard to get with you. But when you find Him, look out, you're going to have a deep, deep relationship with Him, and we see this in the Song of Songs, this romantic poetry that's an image of the love between God and His children. The, the beloved, that's us, says, I was sleeping, and this is in chapter 5, verse 2, I was sleeping, but my heart was awake. The sound of my lover, that's God, knocking. Op and He says, open to me, my sister, my friend, my dove, my perfect one. God sees our perfection. When God sees you, He says, you're perfect. He says, yeah, right, I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. I'm broken. Yeah, but God says, in my eyes, I see your perfection. That's what I see. I see what's good. You're perfect in my eyes. Can you accept that? Goes on. She says in verse 6, I opened for my lover. So she opens the door, but my lover had turned and gone. At, at his leaving, my soul sank. I sought him, but I did not find him. I called out after him, but he did not answer me. 
And in the next chapter, she finds him. But it's, it's, it's kind of a reminder to us that God, again, he's a lover. He's love. There's a, a, a passion that you could say in God. Our adventure of growing to, in love of God and coming to know God, it's a passionate adventure and journey. You know, the, the, the Lord has a, a playfulness to him. God isn't all serious. Just go to an aquarium and see some of the fish he created, okay? God has this passionate, playful love. He wants us to know him, but sometimes he also plays love games with us. This is what the mystics tell us. And so, brothers and sisters, this is the wonderful adventure to which all of us who have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit are called to. We're called to seek God with all our heart, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. And if we seek Him, we will find Him. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on Desperately Want to Know God, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD, a program 1885. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Believe That You Are Forgiven. Hey, I'm sorry for what I've done. Would you please forgive me? And I say, yes, I forgive you. Well, if they come up to me 10 minutes later and say, oh, I'm really sorry for what I've done. Would you please forgive me? I'd say, dude, I just forgave you. Don't you, don't you believe that I've forgiven you? It kind of hurts. And if the week later, oh, I'm really sorry for what I've done. Would you please forgive me? I'd say, hey, I've forgiven you. And it's the same with God. St. Paul, or the Apostle Paul, is such an amazing example for us uh, as aspiring evangelists or trying to respond to that call to share the good news. Now, you may think, well, you know, I can't really relate to St. Paul. He was a full-time apostle. Well, did you know that he had to work for a living like the rest of us? If you go to Acts chapter 18, when he went to uh, Corinth, he worked, um, he worked as a tent maker. So he had a full-time occupation. He worked with some folks that he knew. And then he dedicated himself to, to preaching. So right, right then and there, St. Paul is someone we can identify with, let alone many of us may be having a past life that was in opposition to God, and God maybe had to do something with us to get our attention. Right? So there's two things that we can many of us can identify with St. Paul. And then he goes to preach the gospel. He's dedicated to doing this, and he runs into some opposition. Right? So has that happened to you, that you've preached the gospel, and here he was preaching to Jews? Have you tried to share your faith, maybe with folks that have a religious background? You know, maybe yes, maybe no. And you've received some serious opposition. You thought that talking about spiritual things with other folks you know from church and so on would be something that folks would be kind of pumped about. And yet, to your surprise, you got some serious opposition. That would make you also similar to St. Paul. But St. Paul didn't give up. St. Paul moved on from there and said, okay, this isn't particularly fruitful. And, and he started to reach out to folks, you know, to non-Jewish folks, folks outside of the walls of the, of the church, as it were. But he had a fruit, fruitful ministry also with Jews. So he, he hung in there and he persevered. Now, because of the amount of opposition St. Paul received, 
you know, he could have left. He could have moved on. But we read in um, verse 9, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. He said, do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. And no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. So Paul stayed for a year and a half teaching them the word of God. So, yeah, there may be times where you're getting opposition and the Lord is saying, don't, don't be fooled by the opposition. I'm, I'm doing something here. There are people who are open to me and you're my man in this place. You're my woman in this place. I need you here. Now, he may also say, you know, why don't you go over here, right? Like he had led St. Paul. So the Lord may ask you to stay or the Lord may ask you to go. But either way, we need to consult the Holy Spirit in this, in this outreach that is called our life. And actually, I don't even like to word, use the word outreach because it sounds too much like a ministry. We live our lives. We have people in our lives that are open to hearing. And there are some that are not. And so we ask the Holy Spirit to lead us to those folks who are open to hearing the gospel. But be convinced that if you work full time, you qualify as an apostle. And St. Paul uh, modeled this so beautifully. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the great example that St. Paul is for all of us. And he truly is an example because he comes from a past that opposed you. He had to work for a living. And he had a conviction and a sense of urgency about the gospel. And so do we. But Lord, we know that maybe our ministries, you know, we need to, we need to maybe step up our sharing of the gospel. So we pray, Lord, that you would, you would give us courage, that you would show us those people that are open to hearing from you. Open our eyes. Maybe there are people that, you know, we wouldn't expect. Maybe there are people that we've judged. We said, well, they, they'll never be open in a million years. Maybe that's exactly the person you'd like us to share. But Lord, we need your courage. We need your wisdom. We need a bit of your grace, Lord just to open our mouths and to share with, with great love and humility. So we ask you this, Lord, to anoint us now. Stir up that Holy Spirit you've already given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1885 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on desperately want to know God. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax-deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Believe That You Are Forgiven. Hey, I'm sorry for what I've done. Would you please forgive me? And I say, yes, I forgive you. Well, if they come up to me 10 minutes later and say, oh, I'm really sorry for what I've done. Would you please forgive me? I'd say, dude, I just forgave you. Don't you, don't you believe that I've forgiven you? It kind of hurts. And if the week later, oh, I'm really sorry for what I've done. Would you please forgive me? i say, hey, I've forgiven you. And it's the same with God. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry.